which I will open up here. And that's my presentation. So welcome and practical tips. Uh, wait, this is the live stream workshop. I think I fixed that link already. So hi everyone. We've already mostly introduced ourselves. So let's get straight to the introduction point. So computing is everywhere these days. And that's why we're here. Um, so even though computing is in all kinds of science, computing is often hard and can hold people back because there's as long as cert, I mean, there's programming that you need to know if you're doing that kind of work. And that's sort of our main audience here. But it's not just programming. There's a lot of other skills that are needed in order to do science without barriers, to make high quality reproducible research, avoid some of the kind of problems we solve. But for me, my favorite problem to talk about is someone does a lot of work, they get a nice result, and then they send out their paper and it comes back. And then they're like, oh, I need to slightly adjust this figure, but I can't make it again. All my results look different now. And this is just horrible, isn't it? You spend so much time trying to do what you've done before, and you can't even be sure that your results were right in the first place, or if they're right now. And this kind of effect on reproducible research is the biggest issue that I hope that we can help with this course. So what is Code Refinery? So it's a Nordic project to teach basic scientific computing tools. It's been funded by the Nordic e-infrastructure collaboration. It runs this workshop and others like it, and it runs a GitLab service at source.coderefinery.org, which we'll talk about a little bit later. So who's involved in Code Refinery? Course instructors, the coordinators, helpers, exercise leaders, so many different people are around here making this possible. If you look at our web page, the list is large, and that's just the staff. So practical matters. So how to attend? So when we would, when most people teach online, they reach a relatively small audience. We're reaching hundreds. So we see about 184 people um, in the stream right now. And this is not our limit at all. So I see 200 people who have Hack and D open, and probably there's even more people around um, sharing streams. So you can watch by watching the stream. Anyone can do that. Some people watch the stream and then have their own Zoom meeting for their team to work on the exercises and stuff. Some people are. Um, in the live stream and also have an in-person meetup. For example, in Otaniemi, we've got one. Um, so this workshop has lots of different parts. There's the demo and live stream, there's typing along with the stream, there's working alone, and there's doing breaks. So you may notice we have this really weird uh, vertical screen share. That's because if you have a small computer or even a large computer, you don't need the whole screen for the stream. So our hope is that you can arrange Twitch like this. You can hide the chat. There's this pop out view also that might help. And then you have the other half for all the stuff that you need to do. So chat and communication. So I just got a chat message saying that HackMD, I shouldn't be saying that anymore because, well, we're not using it. So we're using collaborative document here. Like, um, well, you can get the point by now. So this collaborative doc is what we use to distribute information to you. So at the top, you can switch to these different view modes here. We've noticed you need to switch to the edit mode once to get live updates, but then you can switch back to view mode if you're not actively using it and that will save some of the performance of it. 
So we use the collaborative document for chat. So basically, if you have a question, you would write it in a bullet point and then different people can answer here. And always ask questions at the very bottom. So it's sort of like a chat. So you look at the bottom and you see new things come in, except we can answer to older questions and keep it up to date. So um, both we have a dedicated team of people who are reading it and um, answering the questions. And we also have people who are like the instructors are watching it so we can react to it immediately. So don't include any names or identifiers in the document at all. It's public and most importantly, it will be archived at the end. So people can refer to it. So people will always ask, where do we focus? So this is my suggestion. First, you focus on the live stream. You see what we're doing. Then if you have a team you're working with, you focus on your team. You talk with them, you discuss, and so on. Then if you have time, you can focus on your own type along and exercises. Then if you need to, you can focus on the lesson material. And finally, you focus on the collaborative document and chat. And we'll talk about why that is shortly. So let's talk about some things about our community. So not everything will be perfect. So for example, we have more material than we can cover. We adjust to the audience what you want and well, it's there for future review. It's a live production, not everything is curated, not everything is done perfectly correctly. Our point isn't to give you basically a video, but give you this performance that reacts to you and hope that you can see our mistakes and learn from them because that's how we've learned from other people. All the instructors and helpers aren't perfect. There's so many things going on. No one knows everything. And in fact, the reason we do co-teaching like you're about to see is so that the teachers can basically talk with each other and teach new things to each other. We hope that everyone is helpful and respectful to each other. So realize that everyone here is at different levels and is learning different things. Everyone is both a teacher and a learner. We hope that you take some time to check in and talk to each other and see how things are going and help each other when needed. And if something isn't going right, then comment immediately on it. So we do have a code of conduct you can read if needed but that is basically saying what I've said above. So the fun part, what can and will go wrong in a live stream course? First off, you will get overloaded with information, with all the stuff we're talking, with the clatter of document, all the stuff going on, um, there'll be too much. But, and I promise at the end of the course or at the day for our feedback, someone will say, this was great, but there was too much to say. And I will point out, didn't I say this at the introduction? So when that happens, change your watching style. You can take a step back and then um, just listen and then review the material, the videos, whatever else later. So there's never a rush to take part now. The collateral of document is too fast to follow. In that case, don't follow it. Read it later on. This is completely okay. The collaborative document lags and text goes wrong and suddenly there's all kinds of weird stuff being like, it just is looking weird and clearly broken. So in that case, um, switch to the view mode and let's wait a little bit for it to calm down. The real solution is that we need to keep the document shorter. And for that, we move old things to this archive uh, document which has a link at the top of it. So basically after every lesson is done, the stuff from the previous lesson will start to be moved over. We don't have time to cover everything, all of our material. Well, that's just how it will be. We have so much material. Our idea is that we have some core material 
and then extra stuff that you can review later or certain courses might go to. So work with other people and study it yourself. We might deviate from the schedule some because it's live. Well, that's a fact. We try to keep on track. We try to make sure the breaks are always good. If there's major links in the um, the um, if there's major problems in accessibility, um, let us know immediately. For example, bad audio quality, you can't read. Just take the bottom of hack and D and write in, can't see the screen, can't hear, don't understand, whatever. If the stream suddenly dies, which might happen if my computer crashes. It's happened once in maybe 10 or 20 courses. In that case, the stream will die, but stick around and it will resume in about five minutes as I get started again. You don't have important software installed or configured. Well, that's a bit unfortunate because we don't have time to delay and deal with it. In that case, switch to watching mode, work on fixing it the next day, um, go back through the installation instructions. If you can't attend every day, well, that's fine. That's one of the points of the course. So everything is recorded and you can catch up before tomorrow. If my cat visits us, um, well, that's actually not a problem. That's a reason you should stick around until the end and hope it drops by. If the course is too cool and you want to know more, we have hints in the workshop outro and every lesson has extra material you can review. So our final note, please register if you haven't yet. You will get emails from us with updates after each day about what to prepare for the next day and so on. It really helps with our funding and reporting. Um, and um, you can get the registration link from the workshop webpage at least. So we are an open organization. You can join us and help us put on the next, um, the next workshops. We're looking for more partners to do things like local teams, local breakout rooms, things like that. And we really can do this all together. Our social media, we have hashtag code refinery, mastered on Twitter. So for privacy, one of the points of the live stream course is that nothing you say can be broadcasted or recorded. But don't put your names in the collaborative document at any time. Um, it will be posted to the course page. We'll go through and remove any identifiers, but it might appear on stream. And um, yeah, so that's don't have names. All the outputs will be Creative Commons by licensed. And some partners give certificates, look at the web pages. And with that, I am done. And I hope the intro was 15 minutes and not 10 minutes. So if that's the case, Let's flip back to the doc. Uh, let's see, are there any questions so far? We answered that. So Bjorn and Diana, what was your impression of previous workshops like this? Well, uh, I, uh, uh, I've been teaching in these workshops for a couple of years now, but they are getting larger and larger more interactive every time. Um, I think the material is very good and I hope you'll uh, feel the same after going through it. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, let's see, certificate. Yeah, I think most of the questions are already answered here. And you so... exemplarily kept the time. I am very impressed. <laughs> it sets a good example for us. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Um, there's a question, how do I know if I'm on a team? That's actually good. So in previous workshops, we would have people register and we would organize teams ourselves. So basically we would take and um, like divide people into groups of five or so and train one person to be a team leader. And so during the workshop at certain points, we say, now this is your time to work. 
and then the team goes and does the work themselves. So this time with 500 people registering, managing teams was just too much for us. So our idea is that the local partners organize the teams and then we focus on the mass production. So for example, at my university, there's a room and I heard there's about 10 or 20 people in the room who will be working on the exercises together. Same in at least the Netherlands, in Germany, maybe in Sweden. Is there one in Norway this time? And this is what we hope you can do next time. We hope that you can come and you can provide these kind of rooms and things. Um, yeah. That you can do this next time. Or, you know, make a team now for tomorrow, whatever. Bring your friends. I see a question. Can we share images of presenters on social medias? Yeah, so as far as I'm concerned, what goes on stream is Creative Commons by licensed, so can't be shared. Um, so this document, the HackMD, our intention is this to be only for people who register to preserve the load there. The live stream document is linked from the schedule. The registration links on the web page. Okay, um, should we move to the first lesson now? So now you see one of the benefits of the Collaborative of Doc. You can keep asking questions about the intro here, while at the same time we start moving to Git, Git intro down here. Yes, and uh, I am the one to start off. And uh, is it okay to start screen share? Yes. And I will do that. And please interrupt me at, well, actually, Please write in the in the collaborative document if I am going too fast or too slow, and then uh, my colleagues are going to keep a better eye on that. Yeah. And uh, I will adjust accordingly. Yeah. Okay, okay then. So and with uh, that, you... I'm gone for the time. I'll stay in the background, but it's the other instructors who will carry it the rest of the way. So see y'all later. Thank you, Richard. So.